Hi, look what I bought. Wow! I bought a Tesla. <laughs> yeah. oh. ah. ooh, ooh, ooh. Which means I'm in debt. So I thought I have to make some extra money. Let's make a video about it. I had it for three months now. So I developed some opinions around it and I want to share with you. Of course, this is the bare minimum Tesla, a Model 3 standard range plus with no additional features, which is not only the cheapest, but way more than enough for me. And I didn't just pay cash for it. What, did you think I'm a gold mine? I paid the minimum down payment of 2,500 Canadian dollars and I'm paying the rest monthly. Now you might be asking, why did I buy an electric vehicle or EV car and why did I go with a Tesla? You're missing the point here. Now I have a super powerful brushless motor and a huge battery pack. Yeah, whatever. I can drive with it too. Fine, let's answer your questions. Well, let me tell you, I'm not a car person and I won't drool over, say, fast cars or old American muscle cars like some of my old colleagues. What's wrong with you? A car is just a tool. You buy your tool when you need it and you buy it to match the application you have for it. So I don't drool over cars and I don't drool over tools that I don't need. But I drool over tools that I need that can really improve my life. Well, I didn't buy this because I needed a car. I was a happy owner of a Toyota Matrix for over 11 years, which was a great car, still performs great and meets all my applications. We bought an EV car because in general, I was unhappy putting so much pollution and greenhouse gases in the environment. EV cars are the future. In the future, everything should be running on electricity, be it stored in batteries or generated from a nuclear power generator. Although cows burping and farting contribute more to greenhouse effect than vehicles, but I don't think we can run those on electricity. What, like electric cow? Boo. And then again, electric vehicles are only effective if your electricity is clean. I read somewhere that in US, close to 50% of electricity comes from burning coal and gas. And manufacturing one of these electric vehicles actually has a bigger carbon footprint compared to a gasoline car. Well, let me draw it for you. A gasoline car uses, say, this much carbon footprint to manufacture and then burns fuel and increases its carbon footprint. A hybrid car has a bigger carbon footprint to make because it has some batteries, but then uses less fuel. So over time, it uses less carbon footprint and at some point, it will be better. An EV car uses even a bigger carbon footprint to manufacture, but goes up with a much slower slope and will be better than both over time. The slope over time still goes up slowly because the electricity itself might not be clean. Well, hopefully at some point the battery manufacturing technology can reduce its carbon footprint and we will be in a better shape. And then we thought, hey, maybe it's good to have two cars. Once in a while we could do more. But then after one week of having this, I realized that Toyota is going to sit at the curb like 99.5% of the time. So we passed it on to someone else who needed it. And that's what I recommend to you too. If you are not a two car family and one of your cars is going to sit there forever because every once in a blue moon you might have a use for it, then just sell it to someone who needs it. Instead of them buying a new car and adding a whole new manufacturing carbon footprint to the mix. And for your once in a blue moon occasion, you can just rent a car, which is much cheaper for you too. Now, why did we buy a Tesla? Well, that's obvious because I took a special liking to Nikola Tesla. Nah, that's not it. I didn't really care about the brand as long as it was Tesla. Nah. Electric cars are pretty expensive in general. Like this basicest Tesla is around 53,000 Canadian dollars. Of course, our government gives $8,000 incentive to buy electric cars. But there are other good brands that are cheaper than this, like Chevy Bolt or Nissan Leaf that start at around eight to $10,000 cheaper. But one of the important factors for me was the range, because we sometimes travel to cities that might be 300 or 400 kilometers away. And you must know that the advertised range you get with the car is not what you get in real life. I'll talk about the range later. But even the range might not be a problem if you are willing to stop at a supercharger every once in a while to fully charge it and keep going forever. But anyway, I realized by the time I upgrade the Chevy Bolt or Nissan Leaf to have the same range as this basic Tesla, their price would be pretty much the same. But if you care about the price and don't care about the range much, those are very good cars too. The good thing about the Tesla is that even this most basic model comes with a lot of luxury features, which I don't really care about some of them. Like for example, the window ceiling, which is nice to have, but whatever. Or how it recognizes me from my cell phone. 
and adjusts the seat for me. Nice to have, but not a deal breaker. And then there is the super fast acceleration, which is almost never useful unless you're running away from cops or the competing thugs. It's not even good for show and tell, especially if you have a wife like me that whenever I go zoom, she goes slap. If you're not a crazy aggressive driver, you'll never accelerate that hard. But if you are a crazy aggressive driver, get off the road. Or it has cameras all around the car and sensors all around to detect any obstacles or cars, which is good for self-driving. That is, at the moment, is like a jittery grandma driving. I'll show you that later. What I really like is the cruise control, which, unlike other cars, is traffic aware. It sees obstacles and other cars and slows down and stops for them. It stops behind red lights. And it also comes with collision avoidance system, which means it brakes and stops quickly if it notices you're running into an obstacle. Actually, I haven't tried that. Maybe I should try it. I'm gonna put a bunch of cardboard box in the street and drive into them and see if the car stops for them. I like the proximity sensors that help you navigate around the tight spots. I really like all these backup cameras. Really useful. Okay, ready to go? Let's see if it sees them. Go! And... Nothing! It didn't even see them, what the hell? <laughs> Were they too short? From my three months of driving, I know it sees the stuff and stops for them, but those cardboard boxes were not an obstacle. I mean, if they were concrete blocks, my car would be totaled. Anyway, let's drive with the car a little bit. Driving wise, it's a solid car, of course. It barely shakes and very smooth and quiet. See, when I accelerate into a car, it doesn't have any problem seeing it and telling me that I'm gonna crash into it. And in cruise control, it sees the car around me and stops for them. And now even if I push the accelerator... See? It tells me that I'm going to ram into the car. Let's put it in the autopilot. There we go. See? It is stopping for the red light. It sees the red light and shows it. Well, I hope it doesn't crash into anything. There, green light. I have to press the gas pedal to command it to go. Now it's going on its own. I'm not doing anything. Oh, it wants me to move the steering wheel a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I don't know why. Sometimes it sees green lights, but it shows them at red. Like, look at that. It's showing that green light as red, although it's green. I have to, pr oh, I know why. Maybe it's because it's blinking green light. Another one. It's trying to stop for this one too. It's asking me to move the steering wheel a little bit. Ding! There we go. I'm not really worried it might hit other cars or any obstacles, except for those cardboard box maybe. I have to move the steering wheel again. There you go. Good. It's stopping for the red light, hopefully. It is? Uh, okay. Stopping. Good. My foot is just off the pedals right now. Every time the light turns green, I have to command it to go. I mean, what's the point of self-driving then? to move the steering wheel again. Ding! See, I keep having to move the steering wheel a little bit to tell it that I'm not sleeping. And every time the light turns green, I have to push the gas pedal to tell it to go. So the amount of work I have to do for self-driving, I would just take the wheel and steer it myself. Of course, I know it's preliminary software. Hopefully in the future, it's more self-sufficient. But in general, it's not terrible. See the cars going, it starts going too. Suddenly it sees the bus and slows down. So I would say right now it's only good for long trips in a highway that it doesn't need to change lane or anything. Let's see if it actually tries to change lanes. Hey, it changed lanes! <laughs> change lane again if you can. Let's see. Oh, it changed lane right away. My God. Well, it didn't turn. Oh, it turned. Come on, what are we doing? It tried to turn, but then it came back. Oh, it stopped too hard. See, sometimes it stops too hard and it accelerates too hard. Now I'm on cruise control and it's controlling the speed of the car based on obstacles. Well, I know it didn't stop for those cardboard boxes. Let's see if it stops for the end of the road. Come on, stop. What are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Oh my God. <laughs> I had to press the brake manually and take control. Otherwise, I would just ram into those blocks. 
And of course, it'll smash into something if you give it full control. And you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to have your eyes on the road. So self-driving is pretty cool, but it is still not something that I would use. The cruise control though, it's pretty awesome. It's way above the traditional cruise control. You just have to keep an eye for that occasional box or sofa falling from the truck in front of you to make sure you don't drive over it. Oh, and by the way, self-driving came for free for three months. Otherwise, you would have to pay $10,000 for it anyway. I actually like this line on the top, see? When I press the gas, it goes black, showing that I'm using energy. And when I release the gas pedal, it goes green, showing that I'm using regenerative braking to stop. And I love regenerative braking. I almost never have to lift my foot from the gas pedal and press the brake pedal. Still, a lot of people don't know about regenerative braking. See, the same motor that helps you accelerate, it can also be used as a generator, taking the kinetic energy of the car, turning it into electricity and charging the battery. And in return, it slows down the car and brakes it. It's a great and important technology. Electric vehicles use regenerative braking to restore some of that kinetic energy you put out for accelerating the car, which helps increase the range. Of course, the regenerative braking is not 100% efficient. It's like, I don't know, 50% efficient. So you are gonna lose some of that kinetic energy anyways. Tesla's accelerator pedal works differently than the traditional gasoline car. It's like a speed selector pedal. You push it down, it accelerates to some speed, and when you release it, it actually uses regenerative braking to slow it down to a different speed. And if you completely release it, it slows down completely and stops if you are not in a very steep slope. It has some getting used to, but you almost never need to press the brake pedal. You just adjust your speed using the accelerator. Unless you want to stop very quickly and then you press the brake pedal. Which also contributes to the fact that electric vehicles almost don't need any maintenance. There is no brake pad changing or oil changing or transmission fluid changing. So nice. And about the range, like I said, you you won't get what's advertised, which is pretty much the same as gasoline cars, especially in winter that you use heaters to warm up or heated seat or electronics in the car. And in electric cars, there are actually heaters to warm up the battery to put them in proper operating conditions. Like right now the car is off, but I don't know what's running in there. Can you hear it? So in winter, per my experience, you would get around 70% of the advertised range. In summer, the situation is better, around 80 to 90% probably, because you could still be using the car's AC to cool down. So I would say year round, around 80%. And that's not all. According to Tesla itself, the battery can lose an average of 1% charge daily just sitting in the garage, which is around four kilometers in my case. And that's if the garage temperature is above 15 degrees Celsius. Let me tell you a story. I went to a ski resort on top of the mountain which was around 33 kilometers from my home and I used equivalent of 73 kilometers of charge because it was an uphill battle. After we returned from skiing I lost around 16 kilometers of range because the car was sitting in cold air. But coming back from the mountain I had traveled around 21 kilometers and I had gained 5 kilometers of range because of regenerative braking. And finally after around 33 kilometers getting Getting home, I had used only around 7 kilometers of range. You can't say that about gasoline cars. Going up the mountain, you burn a ton of fuel, and coming down, you still burn fuel. You never gain anything. When you stop the car behind the red light, there is almost no consumption compared to gasoline cars. And the price of running on electricity is much cheaper than gasoline. Okay, let's do a quick calculation. According to Wikipedia, my battery is a 56 kilowatt hour battery. And in my area, it will cost me around $5 to $7.5 to fully charge the battery. And say, if you get the worst case of 70% range out of it, it will run for around 300 kilometers. Now for gasoline cars, if you assume worst case we are using 10 liters per 100 kilometers, I would be using 30 liters to get the same range, which will be in Vancouver around $42. Prices are different location to location, but for me, it's like seven times cheaper running on electricity. For me, that's over $100 saving monthly or over $1,200 saving annually. And I don't have to go to a gas station ever again. Well, maybe once a year I have to go to a supercharger station because I always charge at home. And about charging, 
the car already comes with a charging cable which is pretty much all you need the charger already comes with a 120 volt plug you plug it into your car and it starts charging at around 120 volts 12 amps which you can reduce the current if you have to 120 volts 12 amps can take up to two full days to charge your battery that's why you might want to go with these 240 volt outlets you don't need to change your charger you just get a 240 volt adapter for it and change the adapter and with that you can charge your battery with around 240 volts 32 amps which is around 5.3 times faster than the 120 volts 12 amps so it should take around 8 to 10 hours to charge my battery from 0 to 100 percent and yet I adjust the current to minimum 5 amps. Now you might tell me what's wrong with you. The whole problem with electric vehicles is that we can't charge them fast enough and you set your charging setting to minimum? See I realized every day I travel no more than 40 to 60 kilometers. Every night I come in and plug it in on minimum current setting and next day the car is fully charged. There is no point to charge any faster. It's better for the battery, the charger runs more efficiently and there is less power waste on my breaker and house wires and city power lines. 32 amps on 240 volts is the same as 64 amps on 120 volts. Imagine if all the neighbors had electric cars and wanted to charge at maximum current. The city would have to upgrade the entire power system. So I always charge on minimum current. Maybe once in a year I want to go on a long distance trip of say 300 kilometers and then I come back and want to fully charge it and prepare it for the next morning. Then I set it to maximum current. Or I could just go to a supercharger. So that's my entire spiel about electric cars and Tesla. Except, let me show you something. There is a bunch of super strong computers in Tesla for driving or auto steering and other stuff. And they put the weakest computer for the display. Fortunately so far I haven't had problems with the car's computers during driving. But in multiple occasions, I come to the car and turn it on and the stupid display is frozen. Luckily we captured one of the issues, see? The touch screen doesn't work. I'll probably have to reset it again. Okay, seems like it's back to life. Damn it, the display froze again. The funny thing is that I can still drive with the car. I have to reset it by pressing these two buttons for 15 seconds or something and it's coming back. And they have pretty much used the weakest processor for it too. What is it? Like Intel Atom? See, if I try to go to YouTube, there you go. And it keeps turning and turning. Kids are yelling in the back seat. Dad, when will the movie start? And it keeps turning and turning. Dad, are we there yet? Oh, come on, come on, you can do it. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, there, finally. I mean, we are spending so much money buying this car. Couldn't Tesla spend like $50 more and get a decent processor for the display? <laughs> Sounds like one of those cases that somebody gives us something we never had and we complain, why does it suck? But hey, we are spending a lot of money, so give us good processor. Don't get me wrong, it's a great electric car that well exceeds my expectations. And beside the display processor that could be better and other features like the auto steering that is clearly under development, everything else works perfectly fine. Just that those features make you feel like you spend a lot of money and bought a prototype. But the fact is those features are a prototype. Oh, and by the way, did you know that the Tesla cars don't have spare tires? Probably rightfully so, because nowadays tires don't lose pressure right away. You can always get somewhere and fix them. Okay, I'm done answering your questions. Let me see how I can get to my motor Oops. and battery pack. Damn it, what are the chances? I lost my 10 millimeter bit. I can't open the car. Ah!